Welcome back to the channel everyone. Greatly appreciate you tuning in here today. So I had a mishap yesterday with the quail watering system. Um, let me go ahead and kind of show you exactly what I'm talking about. I had this three, uh, three quarter uh, vinyl pipe, what tubing, whatever. And I'm sorry about the focus. And originally had these cups plugged directly into those holes. Um, I did have some Teflon tape put on there to kind of help make up the difference so it would stop leaking. But the quails decided that they like to use these kind of as a wading pool for themselves just because it's getting a little hot and it would push on there and it would pull this out. And it would drain the five gallon bucket overnight. And subsequently one of my quail did pass away this morning. So I made a trip to Home Depot, got some different parts to go ahead and upgrade my system. I've already got the main system installed, but I'm going to go ahead and show you just kind of a small segment of what I'm doing for my second set of quail, since they are in need of a new set. This was kind of a on the fly kind of a setup just to kind of get them some water. Um, basically just went ahead and put in, I think this is a quarter inch tubing, actually it's probably yeah, half inch tubing. Plugged it in there, took a little valve from my air tank that I have because it's kind of got the little riveted, it's kind of got some ribs in it so that way it'll go in there, expand the opening on there and plug it up. But this has been doing okay, but it has been leaking right down here so I'm needing to get that replaced. So I might as well go ahead and incorporate these lovely ladies into the main group. So as it is, I've got it plugged in right here. And it gets put into it right back there. It gets lined up all the way down the rest of the cages so that way they can drink it. Now this is about 10 squares high. I don't remember how much that is. That's probably five inches up off the ground. But that seems to be the just right height. That's about right at their chest height so that way they can't really jump in there like he's trying to but it gives them just enough space that they can be able to get the water that they need and fill up properly. And at the very end, I've kind of got the same thing going as I do on the other side, but it comes into another tubing, but it goes to a valve that if I need to drain it for any reason, I can, or if I need to fill up a water dish, I can be able to do that as well. So essentially what we're doing off of that five gallon bucket is that this is going to go ahead and replace that line that's currently attached to the watering system now. So this is going to go in and it's going to attach to that area and then this is going to go to the five gallon bucket and this one's going to go to the next cage. Now some of the pieces that I've been using here is the half by half adapter. So it's going to be half of inside diameter and half for the uh, the threaded part that's going to be going on to the PVC connection. So that PVC connection is going to have a soft inside on one half and it's going to have a threaded inside for the other half. And that essentially is going to allow, oh dash it all, don't want it open. Hold please. Here's that half by half, sorry if it's not very clear. Anyways, here's the PVC connector. Eventually it screws in. So if you ever do need to take it anywhere or whatever, you can always unscrew it. But before you screw this in to this piece, you need Teflon. It can be any kind of Teflon that is made for water. There's different kinds of other Teflon that is used for like gas and such. But because we're not working with gas, we don't need that. So a rule of thumb when it comes to threaded pieces for water, you take your Teflon, easiest way to do it is so that way this is facing away from you. You place it on the very beginning of the threads and you work it pretty much away from you. If you're left-handed, I'm sorry, I'm doing this right-handed. And you basically work it with the direction of the threads kind of overlap it, maybe 
half of it, half of the, the first width, wind it all the way around. If you do too little, it's not going to do what it needs to. So basically what that does, sorry, let's see if I can focus this for you. Probably not. Anyways, so the Teflon tape acts as a seal for inside of the threads. Because if you don't put this on, water is eventually going to seep through each one of those threads and eventually escape. So the Teflon acts as that barrier, binding that water from getting into or out of whatever you're putting in. That can go for almost anything that you're working with. Then you can take this, then you can screw it onto the connector. If you do not have a grip of steel, which I do not, you can take the suppliers, you can twist it on, you can take a plumber's wrench, you can twist it on that way. You may need two of them, but you pretty much just take it and twist it all the way down until it looks all nice and pretty. Now, I already did this before and that's when I realized I was missing a part. So I had to run back to Home Depot and get what we just did. So these you can find off of Amazon or anywhere else. I'll go ahead and put the description down below for these. Um, you can look up chicken watering teas and it'll pull up like 50 different kind of searches for you. You can find them from six all the way up to like 50. Obviously it ranges, but if it's if it's a dollar a piece, that's that's about normal for these. Um, I'm also going to go ahead and put a, a link in the description below for the watering cups that I use because I like them a lot better than any others that I've been using. I've been using the ones that have the peck on. I've used the ones where it has the little yellow bobber up on top, but I felt like those weren't exactly doing what I needed them to do because Quail don't know how to really peck on that other thing. Uh, the, the yellow little bobber that you have to push down. The floaty one, that one kind of got a little mucky and it was kind of hard to clean out. Um, didn't have enough pressure to keep that bobber up or whatever because it has a plunger. So as the plunger goes down, like when the water comes up, it plunges it and, and kind of stops the water from going through. It didn't seem like it had enough force and so it constantly kept leaking. But with these other watering cups, it uses gravity. So as, rav as the gravity is Sorry, as the water is pushing down on the cup, the plunger goes up and stops the water. So it actually uses physical force instead of the other way around where it, it, it stopped it a different way and, and pulled the plug down. This one is actually forcing it up because there's enough water to plug it up. But anyways, this is a half inch end cap and this is just a piece of PVC pipe. You can get a 10 foot for about five bucks or if you really want to buy, Two foot sticks you can, those are about $3 a piece. So a 10 foot stick is gonna probably cost you, let's see, you have to buy five of these, so it's gonna probably be closer to over $10. So you're paying double to have someone else cut it for you, where you can just buy a 10 foot stick, cut it yourself, and it's a lot cheaper. So anyway, so you can go ahead and chop that off. You can do three inches, you can do whatever you want. For me, because this is the very, very end, I don't need anything else more than this. And I'm just gonna take this two foot part just cause I already have it. I don't see a need to really cut it off. Plus it needs to go the whole length of the cage that I'm doing this in. So essentially it's going across the whole back of my cage and it's gonna be sitting at the very, very end of it in the corner, right where it's all nice and shaded. That way it's gonna be in there and then I can go ahead and use some zip ties to tie this down. That way it stays nice and strong because I've just got chicken wire on it and it needs all the support. But yeah, I'm gonna probably put this up about five inches as well. That way, five inches, why am I thinking five inches? I'm thinking of the squares, the squares are half inch. It's probably about two and a half inches. So sorry about that other comment. I think it's actually two and a half inches off the ground. So it's that high off. That's the size that I, the, the height that I need to put it. Anyways. <laughs> okay, I am tired. Great, so now we're gonna get onto the fun stuff. This particular tubing, I found that I could get these straight pieces at Home Depot. That way I can just plug it in straight as it is. If you were to get the one that was a quarter inch inside diameter, Home Depot does not carry straight um, nozzles there. They only carry the ones that are elbows, the 90 degree ones. You could find a use for it, but I, I didn't want that. 
but luckily my system was already half inch. So that made this a little bit easier and I was able to get these. So essentially how this works is that you can take it and you can plug it in right there. Now, the only problem that I, I did find is that it did leak a little bit, but it could just be the way that I was doing it. Anyways, because it comes off really easily and if you bump it, it can cause a leak. So I ended up investing in these 3 8 to 7 8 uh, stainless steel clamps so that way when I plug it on, I just take it right here, take a screwdriver, you can do a flathead or you can do a hex, get that in there, tighten that down, and pretty much what that does is it bites down on these little ribs right there, sorry, bites down on those ribs, pretty much essentially sealing this thing in so it won't come off. So if you bump it, it will not come off. Even if you pull on it, it won't. Because as it is, that comes off way too easily. So. What we are going to do now is that we're going to go ahead and take our, I think it's called hot, red, red, hot, blue, glue. Say that five times fast. Red, hot, blue, glue, red, hot, blue, glue. So I'm going to go ahead and take my two foot piece. We're going to connect it to there. Essentially, you take red, hot, blue, glue. Sorry, I'm a little tired, a little excited, but tired. Take it. You only need a tiny bit. You really don't need this thing dripping wet with a sealant. Put it in here, wipe out all the way around so that way it's all blue. Pick a side, make it blue through and through. Take your piece, connect it. I like to give it a twist just to make sure it is sealed all the way around. And then just let it dry. Once the blue glues dry all the way through, then you go ahead and get another little dollop. Take it on to your next piece. Go ahead and dab it all the way across. Grab the other end of it. Do the exact same thing. Again, it doesn't have to be drenched. Just make sure that it is blue all the way through. Give it a nice twist. Usually we'll stop after a couple turns, but now Everything is complete. And if you want to do that the same with the other pieces, so that we have multiple setups, you can do just that. Just make sure the spacing is just right. And as you connect these, you can eyeball it to kind of see exactly if they are lined up nice and properly. Otherwise, some of them are going to be up and down. Just try to get as straight as you can. Make it as nice as you want. But this, it's only a one piecer, so if I do need to cut it down in the future, I can put a second one on and just connect it again, which is why I'm doing the two foot and to get it all the way down across the cage. Now that you've decided the length that you need for your pipe, you can use a knife and you can cut it. Just be careful not to cut yourself. Otherwise, you can use these fancy little pipe cutters. You can get them at Home Depot or anywhere else that you want, but these are ratcheting. Makes it really, really nice. Makes for really nice clean ends, so that way you don't have to file worry about any kind of shavings to get lost down on the inside. Essentially what you do, pump the trigger, and it cuts it. There are some where it automatically opens up. These aren't that fancy. I think there's like $10, $15. Use that to cut the pipe, or you can go ahead and use it to cut the tubing. Either way will work. But definitely prefer those to cut both. You can use the knife to cut this. That works just fine. Now, since I've already established what I needed for the other pipe, this is going to be heading towards the bucket. You're going to go ahead and get that connected. Let's see. Let me go ahead and rearrange this real quick. I just wanted to curve a little bit more with the actual lining up of the pipe, so that way it would go in just fine and wouldn't cause any kind of problems. So now that we've got that situated, sorry, I keep calling this pipe when they actually refer to it as a tube. So sorry about that. Anyways. So this is now situated, we are now going to go ahead and connect this tube over here. Go ahead and fit it on, then just take your screwdriver. Make sure that you get a flathead that is nice and wide here. So there's different kind of blade sizes, so you have this one, then you also have this one. You may not see much of a difference, but there is quite a difference there when it comes to the blade itself. 
So the bigger the blade on this is and the denser that it is on the end, the better off you're going to be when it comes to trying to get this in. Because here there's kind of a, a gap in between it, but it is the right width because you want it to be for the whole length of the space that you're trying to put your screw in, uh, to try to put your screwdriver in. That way it doesn't slip around. If that was a little bit denser, it would fit into this little groove a little bit better. But right now, that's all that I got. So that's what I'm working with. So orient it any way that you want. And then go ahead and start clamping that on. Now, some of you are probably saying, but Jaden, why would you want to go ahead and use tubing? Why not just use PVC pipe? You know, PVC pipe works just fine. Yeah, I've used it in the past. Well, the only problem with PVC pipe, it's not flexible. You can't bend it any which way. I like to kind of move my, my watering station around maybe a little bit just to find the right spot for it. Once you put PVC pipe together, it don't bend. So let's just say you need to move it over just a little bit more. Or, oh, let's see, I need to go ahead and make my tube a little bit longer. It's kind of hard to do that with PVC pipe. So if I need to raise it up two more inches, there we go, it's flexible. If I need to lower it down just a little bit, it's still flexible. I can cut this off. This is a lot more expensive than this. I got 10 feet of this for about 18 bucks. Yeah, 10 feet. But I only need a clamp, just a clamp. And I can cut it down any length that I want, just plug it right back in. This, you cement this thing in, it is one and done, son. One and done. You're going to have to cut that off, and hopefully you don't have to go down very much, because if you have to cut it down to right there, you've only got that much to put your new connector on. Tubing. And plus, I can make additions to it. So if I get more cages and they need more watering, I can just go ahead and get a, another one. It's a four-way. Oh, great. Now I can water three cages. And then I can go ahead and keep sending that water down range. Or let's say I go ahead and add this on. I can go ahead and make sure a little bit of tubing. Get another one of these. Put it on. And I've got more. So I can just keep adding with tubing. Or I'm kind of limited on space with these. So this is nice and sturdy so that way it keeps the watering cups in place. And it doesn't flex. So I can mount it anywhere that I want. And it ain't going nowhere. Whereas this... It's a little bit easier because, like I said, you can move it anywhere you want. You can add as much as you want, any place that you want. I almost forgot a step. Yeah, so make sure you put on your connector there. Plug it on. Get it screwed in. Kind of hard to set this up here with just one hand, so I went ahead and did this off camera. But I went ahead and wired it to chicken wire just enough that it's sticking out but just enough that again it is at chest height so that way they can still get in and get that water so we're going to go ahead and remove that abomination over there and get a nice clean installation put over here just make sure that you do have this little silicone piece or rubber or whatever that it comes with make sure it's pressed all the way against the back there and we're going to do the exact same thing that we did with the PVC pipe we're going to go ahead and take some of this Teflon tape. I'm going to wrap it on there. You only need a couple of wrappings, so that should be good enough. So when it whoops, looks all nice and pretty just like that, that should be ready to go. Now once you do get it installed, just make sure that this little rubber piece is butted up against there. You can kind of see that it gets a little bit squished. That means that it is being pressed as much as it can. Don't overdo it, otherwise it'll completely expand and it will not go back to how it was and it won't seal as properly next time okay now i have my little shun dig set up here now they have their water water goes all the way back there now they have water and that's been my adventure here for today so thanks for tuning in here with copper state outdoors if you would like any of the items seen here in this video i'll go ahead and put them down in the details down below thanks for watching